What do you think you are? Supposing this world is a tree, are you leaves on its branches? Or are you a bunch of birds that settled on a dead old tree from somewhere else? I believe that if we are honest with ourselves, that the most fascinating problem in the world is who am I? What do you mean? What do you feel when you say the word I? I myself. I don't think there can be any more fascinating preoccupation than that because it's so mysterious, it's so elusive. Because what you are in your inmost being escapes your examination in rather the same way that you can't look directly into your own eyes without using a mirror, you can't bite your own teeth, you can't taste your own tongue, and you can't touch the tip of this finger with the tip of this finger. And that's why there's always an element of profound mystery in the problem of who we are. This problem has fascinated me for many years and I've made many inquiries. What do you mean by the word I? We speak of coming into this world and this whole sensation that we are brought up to have of being an island of consciousness locked up in a bag of skin facing outside us a world that is profoundly alien to us in the sense that what is outside me is not me. This sets up a fundamental sensation of hostility and estrangement between ourselves and the so-called external world. And therefore, we go on to talk about the conquest of nature, the conquest of space, and view ourselves in a kind of battle array towards the world outside us. When you make something, you put it together, you assemble parts, or you carve an image out of wood or stone working from the outside to the inside. But when you watch something grow, it works in an entirely different way. It doesn't assemble parts. It expands from within and gradually complicates itself, expanding outwards. It is absolutely absurd to say that we came into this world. We didn't. We came out of it. <laughs> I wonder what you mean when you use the word I. What most civilized people mean by that word is a hallucination. An identification of ourselves with our idea of ourselves. Or I would rather say with our image of ourselves. And that's the person or the ego. You play a role you identify with that role. I play a role. It's called Alan Watts. But I assure you, it's a mask and I don't take it seriously. So I know I'm not that. But most of us are taught to think that we are whom we are called. When you're a little child and you begin to learn a role and your parents and your peers approve of your being that, they know who you are. You're predictable. So you can be controlled. But when you act out of role and you imitate some other child's behavior, everybody points the finger and says, you're not being true to yourself. Johnny, that's not you, that's Peter. <laughs> and so you learn to stay Peter or to stay Johnny. But of course, you're not either. Because this is just the image of you. It's as much of you as you can get into your conscious attention, which is precious little. 
Your image of yourself contains no information about how you structure your nervous system. It contains no information about your blood chemistry. It contains almost no information about the subtle influences of society upon your behavior. It does not include the basic assumptions of your culture. It includes all kinds of illusions that you're completely unaware of, as for example that time is real and that there is such a thing as a past, which is pure hokum. But nevertheless, all these things are unconscious in us and they are not included in our image of ourselves, nor, of course, included in our image of ourselves. Is there any information about our inseparable relationships with the whole natural universe? So this is a very impoverished image. And this confused seeking is going on everywhere. We don't know what we want. Nobody knows what they want. We think of what we want in vague terms. Pleasure, money, wealth, love, fulfillment. But we don't know what we mean by all that. So then the next problem that arises is, well, what about all the other illusions? What is important? What is not important? What is good? What is bad? What is pleasant? What is painful? Has to be called in question. Not in order to destroy the whole value system, but in order to see it for what it is. And that's where we will object and say, well, surely that's a colossally difficult task because we are so long habituated to it. And we have been taught to believe that the longer we have been habituated to something, the more difficult it is to change it. And that is true if you believe it. And if you don't, it isn't. It should be obvious that the human being goes with the rest of the universe. Even though we say in popular speech, I came into this world. Now it is not true that you came into this world. You came out of it. In the same way as a flower comes out of a plant or a fruit comes out of a tree. And therefore people are an expression of its energy and of its nature. Thank you.